Hi there, Adam Small here with Agent Sauce, and this is the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. With me, as always, is Doug Carr. The Doug Carr. The Doug Carr, the one and only. <laughs> Thank God for that. You said the <laughs> Real Estate Marketing Podcast, so I was like, the, the only one. Well, we it doesn't matter if there are others. We are the <laughs> yeah. Real Estate Marketing Podcast. <laughs> the At least the one to listen to. Exactly, exactly, so... Uh, so today, Doug, I was thinking that we kind of take a little bit of a tangent and, and talk about um, a technology that a lot of people have probably heard of, don't really quite understand what it is. Yeah. Talk about how it can be used for real estate. It's not necessarily a marketing technology, although there are marketing uses for it. Um, but uh, I want to talk about blockchain. Woo! So, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, blockchain is the foundation for like cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and that sort of thing. But it is not in fact its own cryptocurrency. It's just a, right. it's just a public ledger for them. So want to talk about that a little bit and, uh, you a know, talk distributed about, public ledger. Well, uh, there are a lot of features there that are <laughs> yeah. great. And that's, yeah. that's one of them, which makes yeah. it so great. Uh, so I want to talk about that and talk about, uh, what it can do for real estate. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you touched on one aspect of it already, which is distributed. And by that, you mean, well, the, the, the basis of blockchain, that's really fascinating and people are really even still picturing on, you know, how it can be utilized is that, um, right now, you know, if you get your money from a bank or you get your money, um, your credit card, your number is in one location, right? If it's credit card, the credit card company has that number and that number, is you know that's who you have to authenticate all people have to do to use your credit card is to steal that number or break into the one bank that has that ledger that where your credit card exists right right and so there's two locations them and you and so the the cool thing about blockchain is basically that the the your your identifier is has all of the components of where to go look for clues, breadcrumbs, if you will, of where all the other data is. And so the information is not found in one place. It's found maybe in hundreds of places right. or thousands of places. And so in order to validate, you know, if I went to go use your credit card, you know, it would validate that I was who I was and it would verify it through a number of different places. And so the, the great thing about it is I can't fake that, right? I can't fake putting all these servers up and putting all that information out and then write the blockchain to go check in the right places. It's impossible, you know, it, it's impossible to crack that. Now, there has been security problems and that's where people have stolen the wallet. And that's, right, but that's, that's, not yeah. a, a, that's not a fallacy of blockchain itself. Right, right. That's, that's a fallacy not, of the right. security of the person who, who yeah, held the wallet, exactly. right? So, um, you know, PricewaterhouseCoopers define the blockchain as a, a distributed, decentralized, which is what you're getting at. It's yeah. not in one location, transaction ledger. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's a, Bitcoin uses it to keep track of who owns what. Right. The other uh, piece about it is that it's immutable, resilient, and secure. Immutable yeah. meaning that it really can't be altered without the secure keys. Right. You know, like the keys to your home, you have a key to your blockchain. And, you know, if I, you've got, in this case, 50 Bitcoin in there, it can't be changed and they can't be changed unless you use your key to change that. Right. It right? doesn't matter who gets a hold of it, uh, um, the ledger or whatever. They can't do anything unless they have that one key that exactly. you have in order yeah. to change it. Right. So it's really quite secure because of that and resilient because it's distributed. It's not nothing is in one location. So if a server goes down you know, in, in the U S somewhere, uh, it doesn't matter cause it can be picked up in another region in the right. U S and, and you're not going to lose whatever you have stored in there. Right. So, um, you know, the, this goes back to, you know, how, how, how do you use something like this for real estate? Right. Because, you know, you're talking about storing bitcoins in the ledger and stuff like that, but how do you use it for real estate? Right. There are a lot of applications for well, real estate. You know, you think about when you buy or sell a home, how much paperwork, and how many different places that you have to go to for information, right? Right, right. You've got to go to hundreds. And so the thing is, is again, if if all of this was available through blockchain mechanisms, you could go buy a house and just 
pull out your, you know, on your phone or whatever, your blockchain wallet, it could go back and validate all of the data. Your Right. Your, well, there's a title search to yeah, verify your, that the person actually has title right. to the, the property, the listing. There's, you know, all of the uh, research that goes into what's been done to the house, yeah. you know, um, the inspection and all that stuff. You can literally look up the entire history of everything right. that's there and know. And that's, and that's the mining aspect that people would have to go through is they right. would have to. And so it wouldn't be like instantaneous where you press a button, you know, but, you know, once you initiated the, you know, the purchase or whatever, it would basically go out and start verifying and validating every single element. And so the you could never sell the same home twice with a fake title certificate. You could never, you might even be able to have it like the, the future of blockchain, which is pretty fascinating is you said it just there. You said, well, maybe the home inspection and maybe even the maintenance history of the home is available through blockchain. The fascinating thing then is maybe you don't negotiate for a house anymore. Literally, a house's price is based on the factual, you know, all of the elements of the blockchain, right. which is pretty fascinating. So you would get told basically by the system, you we can't loan you this much money because the house is only worth this much because of and, the and age of the a, air conditioner and right. the this and the that. Well, yeah. and that's that's an interesting point. You know, I think that the, the, the other aspect that's really uh, a great thing to think about is the fact that you would be able to have the entire history of the listing, yeah. right? So you'd be able to look at it and and from a verified proof, you know, one of the things they do is a title search to verify that there's no liens or anything like that against the, the listing, right. you know, so it's a clean title, that this person has the right to the title um, and, and, you know, stuff like that, which, you know, takes a while now, yeah. right? So, you know, this is a technology that could in, immensely speed up that Huge. process, right? Um, and then in addition to that, uh, you know, you know without a doubt that this is was in fact verifiable information. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's that's one way that it could be done. Um, the, the other one is real estate agents, right? right? If you're a great real estate agent and every transaction that you've placed, bought or sold a house is in a history, now it's total transparency as far as how good a real estate agent you are. Right. What your transaction volume is. You yeah. Know, what you're working on. You know. Uh, you're able to go in with verifiable proof that, you know, you know if, if somebody wanted to look it up, they could verify it as yeah. long as they had access to the blockchain itself, right? Um, you know, the other thing there, too, something that's recently been going around uh, the last couple of years, I should say, is, is fraud. It's a great fraud prevention tool. Um, what we see now, one of the things going around is that uh, hackers will get into a, an agent, a real estate agent's uh, email, and they'll sit and they'll wait for a closing. And then the day of the closing, a couple of hours before, they'll fake an email to the uh, buyer and they'll say, oh, the wiring instructions have changed. Ugh. Now you need to wire your deposit to this address instead, Yeah. right? To this, not this address, but this bank account right. instead, right? And so the buyer's typically frazzled or whatever. And you know, the, 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 the scammers will put something like, you know, I'm in a meeting, so please don't call or whatever, you know, and, and yeah. the buyer's, you know, they're frazzled. They're trying to get this closing done. They're excited and they, they trust their agent. And, and they didn't notice that the email address was one letter off or something, you right. know, uh, especially now that a lot of email clients hide the email address and just show the name, right? Yeah. So they wire the money out, hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever it is, and it's gone. It's in the ether. It's gone, yep. you know? Um, so they're unable to get it, and, and then they don't have the deposit, you know, for Ugh. their home. So that's a big fraud thing going on now. And, you know, I look at it and I go, um, from an agent perspective, you know, establishing a secure communication channel is vitally important. Yeah. Because email is email's pretty pretty easy to it's work wide open. around, right? People don't realize how that it's a it's a total if you're if someone is um, monitoring your network, email is going by in plain text. Yep. No so, encryption. Yep. Yeah. So so I feel like, uh, you know, blockchain technology could be something where you could set up a secure communication channel where you've got your key and the agent has their key or the um, customer has their key and you're just passing communications back and forth through the blockchain and you have verifiable evidence that yes, you as the agent sent this and then security and trust on the other end that this actually came from the yeah. agent, you know, so they know that it's verifiable, good information, you know. 
um, and, and you know, there's a ledger of it too. So that exactly. you know, say, say, say uh, an agent did send the information and it was wrong, then, you know, there's proof that that was wrong, yeah. you know, or, or on the other side of it, there's proof that the agent never sent anything and the person yeah. responded when they shouldn't have, you know? So it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's fascinating. I uh, like uh, from a marketing aspect, it's really good too. like advertising um, right now. Ad fraud is, is huge, you know? So for people that don't realize, you know, that there's, there's literally people that create, you know, server farms and, and, you know, bring these sites up, put them on Google ads, AdSense uh, or AdWords and um, AdSense, I should say. Right. And, and, um, and basically fake websites to get ads and then, and then click on them, you right, know, right. and so that their website, you know, gets a little bit of money, gets a little bit of money. Right, right. And, and they'll create tens of thousands of these, you know, Well, in, with scripting and automation yeah. stuff, it's pretty easy to yeah. do that, yeah. And so it's a, I think th they say something like 35% of all money now spent on advertising is pretty much fraudulent. Fraud, right. It, it's someone clicking that shouldn't be clicking or a machine or whatever. And so the it's another one where that the fact that you would be able to track down every single click where it came from how it got there so it would make your ad spend less oh, you, you'd be oh, able yeah. to save a ton of money on your yeah. ad marketing not only that you'd know that your ad marketing was going toward something right. uh valid yeah you know so it's it's twofold right you're not spending that money 35 percent of right. your, your spend and you know that um, you the know money where you are spending is in fact being targeted exactly, properly. Exactly. Exactly. So. You know exactly where it came from. The 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 barriers now that they're working on are speed. Obviously, you know right. that if you open up a web page, the you notice that the ad loads almost as fast as the website, which is pretty amazing. Right. You know, and so when you're starting to log you know, blockchain and different ledgers and, and everything else that the delay is significant. Right. In fact, the, the energy that it takes is, is significant right now. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to, now they're creating processors that are fine tuned just for mining and everything else to try to um, speed up those mechanisms. But once those mechanisms get really fast and these systems get efficient, um, this, this technology is going to be maybe a little bit scary because of the transparency that it'll provide. Um, and, and maybe a little, you know, well, I don't know. You can set up your own personal blockchains. Can you not? Yeah, you can. So, so and my point there is that, you know, um, say an organization, a, a brokerage wanted to set up a blockchain for secure communications, yeah. right? Um, they wouldn't have to provide right. the transparency to anybody and everybody, right? Right. You know, but they well, would no, still I mean, have that information. I from mean, a, the a the, tran the transparency side is that you know uh, humans are flawed human beings, you know, and it's and, and so the we do things bad and we say things <laughs> wrong and we do things well with blockchain on everything. It's immutable. It's unchangeable. Yeah, so the moment you do it, it's, it's written your, in stone. Your almost, entire right? history is available. Right. And so that's where it's, you know, so if right, you, right. you know, I, you know, look, I, I know the, the housing market went through a huge thing years ago because people were hiring their in, inspector for the house and their mortgage broker and, right, you right. know, and, and selling houses that shouldn't have been sold and, and to stuff. people who shouldn't have been buying them. Yeah. You know, well, so. blockchain would have destroyed that. It would have never happened, you know, that because way. of, because of the verifiable person yeah. on the other end and, and their income and all the other factors around that. And then on the house side of it as well, they wouldn't have been able to inflate the price and say, right. sure, it's worth, you know, $200,000 when it's only worth a hundred thousand right. dollars because of the and, history and, and, the, and, and look, all that. So. The other side of it too is mortgage, mortgage brokers and inspectors and, and, and real estate agents, we all want to close on the house. Right. We, you know, and so I don't care if the trim is a little bit off or this or a little bit off. And if they leave it off the paperwork, fine, you know, I'll fix it when I buy the house or whatever. Well, you know, that kind of stuff won't be transparent. <laughs> you, right. You won't be able to omit that stuff anymore. You right, know? right. Everything right. is going to be logged and categorized and, and indexable and searchable, you know. Right. Which, you know, does, does lend itself from a fraud perspe perspective yeah. as well, because, you know, you get your house flippers and some of them are, some of them are amazing, you yeah. know, and they go in and they really gut the thing and they, 
uh, you know, bring it up to code and make sure that they spend the money right and, and all that. And then others, not so much, you know, right. it's, it's, uh, like my house where I had a radiator hose on the back faucet under the house. <laughs> not sure I heard about that. Yeah. So <laughs> someone, someone literally, there was probably a pipe leak or whatever. And whoever it was just put a radiator hose with, with hose clamps out to the faucet. And nice. we didn't find out until the middle of winter when the hose <laughs> boosh burst. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. But you know, but so. that transaction would have been identified and logged, associated with the house, associated with everything, you know. And so it's it's pretty fascinating technology. It's really going to, I think it's really going to transform business transactions just because there's going to be a level of honesty and trust there that we've never had before. Right. So it's going to uh, provide, a, um, like you said, level of yeah. trust and transparency across the board, not just in in, in a, a marketing or even a, a, a housing informational store, but yeah. also business transactions in general, yeah. you know, from the bank right to your, your bank account to your wallet, right? So very interesting stuff. Uh, anything else on blockchain that you want to mention, Doug? No, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, for, for people that, you know, obviously there's the, everybody associates it with, with, um, cryptocurrency right, right now, right. just because that's the leading, you know, use of it right now. But it, but it's, that is by far not it, you know, say the, the exciting ones for me are the fraud prevention on advertising and marketing. Right, right. And then the sales contract negotiation is a, is a fascinating one too, that these people are really working on these systems now that will just go out and seek and find all the information that you need for a sale. Right. And that's, that's cool. I mean, imagine how much easier it'll be to buy a house without the 400 pages of paperwork that you have to go through and collect and everything else. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and for me, I think that that's, that's the, the thing is that, you know, blockchain is not just for cryptocurrency, right? right? Uh, it can have a huge impact on the ability, the speed, yeah. the verification, the trust factor of which you can, you know, in, in real estate case, you know, buy, sell homes. Um, and, and also the um, comfort of knowing that, yes, the money's going to the right place at yeah. the right time. Yeah. And, and it's for the right purpose, you know, meaning that, you know, yeah, they didn't overbuy on this house or they didn't, um, you right. know, they're not going to end up with a, a, a lemon of some sort, you know, right. if you can use that term for a home, right? So, um, great. Um, well, I think that's probably our final point there is that uh, yeah if people are interested they should probably read a book like on bitcoin or something because right. it'll start out with what is blockchain technology exactly so and you know so blockchain is not just for cryptocurrency yeah. right and the the one to keep an eye out is uh ethereum is a cryptocurrency however it's being utilized for a number of these eff different efforts it's right. not it's not just money it's 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 being used for a validation process and so that's a good one to kind of keep an eye out on they've got problems with it too that i've been reading about but um but it's probably the first one that i think its main objective wasn't to be used as currency it was to be used as a validation technique for yeah. uh, identification and transactions cool well hey doug thanks for joining us today appreciate you sharing your blockchain knowledge um if you guys want to learn more, feel free to contact us at info at agentsauce.com or check us out online at agentsauce.com. Thanks and have a great day.